Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to change the directory in which iTunes create the backup for our iPhones or iPad. Now there can be many reasons why you may want to change the directory in which the backups are created. For me, it's very simple. My C drive in which the iTunes is creating the backup is a solid state drive and it comes with a limited storage space. My SSD has 256GB of space only whereas the backups which are created by iTunes are more than 70 to 80 GB. So I just want to change the folder in which the backups are created. If you want to have a look, I can just show you the folder in which the backups are created. So just open your PC. Then click on users. Under users, you will have to open your current user. And then click on Apple, then Mobile Sync, and then finally Backup. Now, if we right click on this folder and click on Properties, you can see the size of this backup folder is 109 GB, which is a lot to be saved on a solid state drive, especially when it is less than 256 GB. So this is the reason I'm going to do this, and I'm going to create a folder in my another drive let's say drive d which is on a conventional hard disk so i'll just open this drive d and then i'll create a folder let's say itunes backup and to make it simple i'll just make it itunes backup without any space all right now open your start menu and search for cmd that is command prompt and just open it up all right Then type cd space d colon backslash itunes backup and the active directory is not changing. So if you are also facing the same problem then just type cd space forward slash d space d colon backslash itunes backup backslash now this forward slash d is going to change the current drive in addition to changing the current directory for a drive if you just use it it's going to work for you or in short since the directory we are trying to open is on another drive so we have to switch the drive as well the current active folder will be the itunes backup folder now after that just minimize the command prompt and then open the folder where we have the backup of the itunes so either you can directly delete this backup folder but i'll just change the name of the backup folder in case something goes wrong i can just use this backup so i'll not delete it for now i'll just rename it all right then after that open the command prompt once again and then just open this notepad i'm going to keep this notepad in the description of this video so you can just open it up now depending on the itunes version that you have installed on your computer we have to use the command and also depending on the version that you're using the backup folder will be in different directory like for example if you have downloaded the itunes from the apple website then your backup folder will be under c then users then your current user then app data then roaming and then apple computer and then within that we'll have mobile sync and then backup and if you have installed the itunes from the windows store then it's going to be the same path as i am having since the itunes that i have installed on my computer is from the windows store and anyways apple is also pushing the users to install the itunes from the windows store and depending on the version that you are using you just have to copy the command let's say for me since i'm using the windows store version of itunes so i have to copy this command that is make link forward slash j then this is the path for the backup folder and then space then we have the second path which is the itunes backup folder that i have created so we are making a link between these two folders it's not a shortcut but it's kind of a link so even though itunes will try to save the backup in its original folder but in essence that backup is going to be saved into the new location which is the d itunes backup 
So for iTunes, the software will still be saving the backup in the same directory or in the same folder in which it has been saving before but it will be saved on the D drive and in the new directory that I am specifying here. So anyways, I'll just copy this command and uh, before copying, you have to change the current active user. For me, it's T-A-N-Z-E. So I'll just write that username here. And then I'll just copy this entire command. And I'll just paste it. And hit enter. And then you can see we'll get a message like this junction created for C users, then the current user, then Apple Mobile Sync backup with D iTunes backup. So that means a junction has been created, a link has been created between these two folders. Then we can just minimize the command prompt or close it. And if you open the Mobile Sync folder, then you can see that we have a backup link here and this link corresponds to the folder which is in the d drive and this backup one contains the original backup of my phone so now we can just delete it all right So you can see now my C drive or the solid state drive has 110 GB of free space out of which 109 GB was occupied by the backup file. And uh, if you open the D drive or the drive in which you are saving the backup, you can see that the folder is empty because we have not created any backup. So I'll just open my iTunes and I'll connect my phone and then I'll just create a backup. then let the iTunes create a backup for your phone or iPad. It's a time consuming process. So let it get completed. Now once it is complete, you can open the drive in which you are saving the backup and you can see the backup has been created there. Then let's go back and then see the properties of this new folder. And you can see the backup has been created with 94 GB and finally my SSD or my C drive is free from such a big file and the backup is going to be saved in the D drive only and if you open the default directory of the backup in the C drive you can see this is the backup link which has been created for the D drive so in essence the file is going to the D drive even though the iTunes will treat it in a way that it is saving the file in its original or default directory only. So that is what we wanted. We don't want to disturb the iTunes in performing its function. I hope this video helped you. So don't forget to give a thumbs up and thanks for watching.